Hello YouTube, it's Mike Edelman, Crystal Bear Leatherworks. Uh, I'll be doing a pocket holster today and I thought I'd do a little video on it, give you a few steps. Uh, I'll be doing this kind of like for beginners, so I know there's a lot of people that do leather work that might watch it that get kind of bored with it, but uh, I want to go over it just step by step how I do it. Uh, in the future I plan on making a few more uh, videos and getting them posted up, so uh, Hope you enjoy this one and kind of look out for some more coming your way. Okay, uh, let's go over the pattern just a minute. Uh, this is a Raven 25 Auto. I carry this uh, in my pocket all the time. And th this pattern for this one is a little big. Uh, I wear overalls and overalls have big pockets. So I want to make it to where, you know, it doesn't turn in it. Uh, main thing is on... Uh, any pocket carry, be sure the trigger is always covered. You don't want nothing in your pocket setting it off. So basically what I did is just laid the gun out and kind of got a center and just roll it over, just, just wrap the gun. And you'll have to trim the pattern after you get the leather cut around it for a, a lot closer fit. Uh, some of the key things, I need to look for is, is right here especially on this the small raven I've got huge hands I'm 6'4 about 320 330 pounds so not no small fella but I gotta be able to, to be sure that I can grab it to get it out of here and uh, so I just get a rough rough pattern kind of you know the way you want it to kind of start heading um, I'm going to try to get it to where it doesn't print so bad in my pocket. Uh, people around here still get real scared when they see somebody with a gun. But uh, I want to get it to where it doesn't print. Uh, and that's basically it, really, just kind of get started. The one thing on a uh, pocket holster, on the, uh, the holsters I do, uh, my concealed holsters and my pancake holsters, you do a lot of detail work on them on a pocket holster you don't want that detail you want it to be able to slide in and out you don't you know you don't want to pull your gun out and have your holster stuck to it so you want it just something to cover your gun more or less to hold it up straight in your pocket like this to where you, you reach in your, your your gun is not sitting sideways or the barrel pointing up it'll go in your pocket the bottom of your pocket will be here it'll be sitting in there at least it'll always be up and ready to pull straight out so uh, I'll go ahead and cut the leather and when I get it cut, uh, I'll just cut it to my pattern, trace it and cut it. Uh, I'll be back with you when I get it cut out. Okay, this is a really just a scrap piece of leather I had. Uh, it had a lot of streaking in it. It came off a double shoulder, so I can't really make belts or a lot of stuff out of it. So it's going in my pocket, so it really doesn't matter about it. Uh, you see, I... I just cut I just laid the pattern on it, marked it out, and did a rough cut. I'll do all the finishing once I make sure everything is the way I want it. And remember too, this, this is the way I do it. There, you, could, you could have a hundred people and a hundred people gonna do it different. I'm not saying this is the way it has to be done. This is the way I do it. It's easy for me. If you can use it, and that's good. And if there's something you just think is totally wrong, then just don't use it. I mean come up with your own stuff, but I'm just trying to show you the way I do it. Basically the way this turned out was like this. I have plenty of room here. I'll be able to get it. Like I say, this, this gun's almost too small for me. But um, I do like carrying it. I'll probably end up getting a little bit bigger gun. Uh, let my wife carry this one or something. But uh, basically what I do is I get it in here. I see it. Okay, this might be just a little bit too long. I may need to trim some. The barrel's up in there about a half inch. So, uh, not really hurting anything but it could be trimmed but really doesn't need to be as, as big as these overall pockets are what I do is, is I just kind of get it and I can I can feel the outline of the gun so I know where the stitching has to be uh, I'll stitch this line right around the edge of the gun I don't know if you can see that I'll stitch this line first and get the gun where I want it I'll leave this extra because I may have to come back in I may trim it I may hook it uh, for me, I did Kydex work. Uh, I used to make Kydex hosters, but I really wasn't in love with Kydex. Uh, 
I'm a leather worker, so I, I like leather better. But I do have Kydex here. My intention is to put a piece of Kydex coming up the back right here with a little roll on it with a thumb. Just just roll it around, make a loop, and uh, to when I, I grab it, I can always put my thumb right there to pull it out. That way I know it's not going to come out of my pocket, regardless how tight it is, I'll push the holster off. Uh, that, that's my intentions right now. It may be loose enough where I don't have to. Uh, you control that yourself by how tight, how much tension you put on it right here. Like I say, I'm not, uh, normally what I do is I stitch this up tight. I wet the leather, I wrap the gun in saran wrap, I press the gun in there, I mold all this, I put retention on the the trigger guard. Uh, you usually have to put a sight groove in it right here to where you don't have to worry about your sights hanging. But like I said, I plan on this being loose enough to where I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I just need something to hold my gun up, basically like that. Uh, like I say, right now my intention is to put a little thumb grip on that. I will probably do a little bit of wet molding on it. Just like I've just seen, this doesn't really hold it that tight right there. If you wet mold this, once it dries, it makes it a little bit tighter fit. So it, it all depends on how it turns out. But um, like I say, I can see the print of the gun. I normally do it on the outside, people do it on the inside, uh, and a lot of times I do my uh, hosters that are going to be seen, I, I usually do it on the inside, but I just, right now I'm just going to come up with a general stitch line, uh, it's nothing tight, nothing tight at all, I do it, I use a, not a sharp pencil, I let the point get just a little bit rounded or rounded up some. That way it doesn't really cut into your love. I don't know if you can see that or not. You see, I just made the little line just following kind of the, the print of the gun. Nothing tight whatsoever, just the print of the gun. I can always go back and run another stitch beside this one. So it, it kind of gives me a start point. Okay. Uh, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but where I was pushing on it, you can actually see the end end of the gun. So I know where my inside is going to be. I can, this is where my trigger guard is. I can always lay my gun back down right here and mark this around. That's the print of my gun right there. So I basically know where it's going to be. And like I said, this is just all rough ideas. This ain't where, you know, exactly everything's going to sit. But see, once I glue that up, then I got a good good round shoot for it and everything else. But uh, what I'll do, is, like I said, I've got my outside, and the outside, if you see the inside, the actual grip stops here. The outside is down here. Basically, you're talking about a half inch clearance between where it is and where, it, where it's the uh, trigger guard actually stops. So that's going to be, like I say, about a half inch. Uh, I want to go ahead and I want to bevel all these edges. I take my beveler and I'm just going to bevel them because I'm, I'm going to burnish it. Uh, This has done got a little bit dull. Uh, sharpen it. The edges form my stitch line down. I'm gonna bevel the outsides. I'm not gonna bevel the inside because once I glue it together, that part will be beveled as one. The inside area here, all this on top. All this on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and burnish all that before I ever sew it. It's just easier. Uh, I use a burnishing wheel that uh, I made out of black walnut. I have it on a uh, bench grinder. I used to do it by hand, but 
I can do it with a motor hook to it and I got a stand there. I'd rather do it like that and I had to try to burnish everything by hand. Like I say, from this stitch line around the top, I want to do the inside. That way I get a good burnish on it. Good round type burnish. Uh, if I was doing this for a customer, if they want to do the extra, I, when I do stuff, I, I try to accommodate the customer however they want to do it. Um, a lot of people would want this lined. I use pigskin liners. A lot of people don't like to use pigskin liners on a gun, but because uh, they're vegetable tan and they say that can leach out in it a little bit, but I've never had a problem. But uh, for myself, I'm not going to really do anything. Uh, I've got three states. Like I said, I got one where I line them, and everything adds adds to the cost. So you know, to keep the price down, I can line them with pig skin. I can sand this. I can sand this to where it's smooth. It, it gets almost as smooth as the outside. Not quite, but smooth it out. But since this is for me, it doesn't bother me it being like that. So I'll just leave it like that. But something to think about when you're doing it. Okay. I came out here the other day and I work in a shop outside in my backyard. And I keep water out here for stuff. And everything was froze solid when I came out here the other day. It's still icy, but it's still. I, I dye stuff black. I prefer natural oil. I do dye stuff some brown if the customer requests that I don't like brown. Uh, I prefer oil. I use olive oil. It's cold enough out here to wear my olive oil. It's just, I'd have to thaw it out. I might get ready to do this. Um, a little bit on that. The reason why I don't like uh, dyeing brown. I don't know if you'll ever be able to, if it can pick this up. Leather always has, you see the, the little bitty nicks in it. Those, most of those are bug bites. Uh, you have little scars in it like this. It's where the cow rubs up on a bob wire fence. Uh, I use the economy leather. It's a hoster. You know, if I'm, I can get the better leather, but just quite frankly, nobody wants to pay the price for the leather. So I get economy leather. When you do brown dye on this, a lot of times these scars and bug bites, it'll make them pop and they'll just stand out. A lot of people say, oh man, that, that's just cool, that looks great, and they just love it. Uh, a lot of people don't. They, they, they don't want that, those little marks in it. But uh, the brown dye makes them pop every time. Uh, and I'm not really willing to really go up on the rate of leather to add the expense to everybody. I just have to pass it along and everybody wouldn't want to pay it. So I just use this and make them aware of it. All I do on mine, I don't use waxes or anything like that. I used to use wax and it would uh, get on the outside of the leather a little bit or something like that. And it just messes your dye and everything else up. So I just, I wet it just a little bit. I don't soak it. I wet it just a little bit. Wet it just a little bit. Okay. I'll be right back. I'm going to burnish it and I'll be right back. Okay. We're all burnished up. Don't know, like I said, I don't know how well this camera is picking all this up. You can see I stopped the burnishing right along here. Same thing on the bottom. I stopped it right about here. Just got the, the single edge where. Once it's glued, I like I said, I'll, I'll burnish these edges together. So see, that gives me the burnish finish here and up on top right here. But uh, I, I, I still do a lot of hand sewing with artificial sinew. Uh, I have a Tipman Boss sewing machine. I'm going to sew this on my sewing machine uh, just because it's a lot easier. Make sure everything still fits. All right. I just want a kind of a mark 
starts here, ends, ends in here. So I know that that's right around in here. I just kind of get a, a mark, just a glue line. And I know I'm about a half inch away, so I'm gonna come in here. I don't have to glue it all the way up to the gun. Let's say I, I use 277 thread, it's not gonna break. So this give me somewhere I can glue here, I can glue here. All I use is uh, weld wood. I don't buy the, the high dollar leather stuff. I, I, I get this stuff, quartz. I can get a quart for what you pay for a small bottle of the leather stuff. This stuff never lets go. I do it just like you do the leather cement. I don't never go all the way out to the edges, which I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't want the glue to ooze out because when I go to burnish it, if you let it ooze out the tops and bottoms, it will uh, affect your burnishing, especially if you're if it's one you're gonna dye. Then when you uh, dye it, it'll stand out. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. Okay, these see these edges. I don't go right up to the edges. I always leave me enough space to where it doesn't ooze out on the sides. We'll let this tack up a few minutes and I'll be right back with you. Okay, got it glued up. That's just a little spot of water right there. I did try it in my pocket with the gun in it. And this corner has got to be rounded a little bit. These pockets in the overalls, uh, especially on this, it's got a real, real radius on this back corner. So I'm just going to take, uh, it's actually just an old burnishing wheel, hand burnisher, and put a mark me a radius on it. And that's the good thing about this, you can always try it. You can always try it. If you don't like something the way it is, you can always change it. Cut this off, be right back. Okay, I cut this off, and the way I do this, I like my edges real, real even when I start. That way, I don't have to do a lot. Uh, I have the uh, rigid sanding station come from Home Depot. So what I do once everything's dried, I sand it. I just lay it down flat, keep it straight, and I sand it. That way, all the edges are all the same all the way around. Just makes it easier. Makes it easier in the long run. In the long run. So I go back, bevel the outside edges. I always like to sand it before I cut my groove for my stitches. That way I got a good smooth edge to do that with. I'll show you that in just a minute. When you sand it, it kind of flares the edges out just a little bit. And when you take uh, when you take that and go over the edges, uh, all of this little edging tool, and it just cuts and burns right off. You can see now that's ready to burnish. It's ready to burnish it all the way down. But now before I burnish it, I'm going to mark my lines. I need to run a stitch all the way around it to keep from separating. I need to get this this line in here. Oh, I need to I need to get the groove in the stitch line right here, coming all the way around. So uh, I've got a grooving tool. Um, okay, this is just a regular grooving tool, tandy leather, no big deal. Uh, if if you're going to do anything with leather, you're going to need stuff like this. Th this is essential. If you don't. Your, your stitches will be embedded in the leather, the depth of the thread. If you don't do this, your stitches are on top. The first thing that's going to happen is your stitches are going to get wore out. You get them wore out, it's going to come apart eventually. What I did on this, normally that little arm 
on the outside. It goes up against the outside. I put a little bend in it to where it's not straight. That way when I go to do it, it gives me just a little lip to hold on it. It doesn't slide off as bad. You can see, you can see how it works. It comes around. So I want to groove it from this stitch line to this stitch line. You can see that from the bottom stitch line to top stitch line to the bottom stitch line. I'll take this arm off and I'll freehand that. I like to put a nice thick deep groove in it. The harder you push, the deeper the groove is. Like I say this it's just basic. To me that's a basic tool. I don't know how you can see the groove it put in it. That's just a place for my threads, all that is. Uh, it'll be let in. That way it won't rub the surface, it won't rub the thread. Uh, all I'm doing here is I'm transferring the marks. Put a little mark there, a little mark there. That corresponds with where I stopped. And start it here and here. Put it on the other side so I can groove the same thing on the other side. Okay, you can see, there's the other side. Uh, it's not as bad doing this with the Tipman. Uh, I still do a lot of hand stitching and it, it, it's kind of hard. I have the dermal tool, dermal tool on the little stand and I, I drill my holes in it. It's real hard to line the front and the back up because anything can get in the way and it'll tilt this leather one way or the other and basically it just kind of throws your stitches off so it's real hard to do. Uh, you take a stitching all and start in from the front and watch and you can see the leather poking out the back but uh i've just never really done the stitching all so i not really haven't never really used them so i can't explain the stitching all to you that much uh, this arm comes out and you can kind of freehand with that like i said i'll freehand this just go slow, stay on your line. That's all you have to do. It's a little S. Just stay on your line, go slow. It'll work out. So that's going to stop the gun. That, that'll hold the gun right here. It'll hold it in here. It's not going to go too deep down in there. I don't want it to go no deeper than this. So it looks like, you know, it looks like it's going to work pretty good. So I'll go ahead and, uh, like I said, I'm going to use my Tipman ball, so I'm not going to stitch this by hand. And when I get done stitching it, I'll be back and go over the next part. Okay. I went ahead and did. Got all the stitching done. Laid in the groove. Everything looked good on it. I went ahead and burnished the edges. So that's the reason why I waited till then to burnish it. Looks like one of the edge. You can still see a little bit of a line. If I oiled this, that would all disappear. Everything turned out in the grooves on the back. Turned right out in there. Everything's smooth on front. I do take, after I get done sewing it, uh, my little leather maul that I use when I do my tooling. I always pound them flat. You don't want no thread sticking up. You don't want thread rubbing on everything to cut the thread. So make sure they're all pounded flat. That's basically all we have to do with this holster. The gun fits in it nice, neat. It's not going to be one. You could probably shake that and that gun would probably come out. That's not what the kind of holster this is. It fits in your pocket. Keeps that gun from turning. It sits flat down. It sits in here like this. It keeps your gun up to where you where you hold it. Another thing, don't never try to reholster the the pistol in your pocket. 
pull the hoster out, re-hoster it, then put everything back in your pocket. Um, let me move this camera around and see if we can um, try to get it to where you can see what I want to do here. Maybe that does it. Like I say, especially these overalls. These overalls, they've got huge pockets on them. See, it fits right down. You can see, there's the print of it. Let me hold it. You got it like this. There's no prints, no nothing. You reach in, it's ready to go. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put a little thumb lock on this one. Uh, it pulls out. Originally what this does is that hook, let me show you, when you pull it out, this hook hangs right here, so that when you pull the gun out, it actually hangs to leave your holster in. When you pull your gun out, it's made to hook right here, and pull the gun out, your holster sits there, you have your gun in your hand. I prefer not to have this come out. So I'm going to put that little thumb clip on the edge of this. Uh, that way I can push down on it, pull the gun right out. And it, it'll get looser because it's tight right now because it's new. I could wet form it and it would be to where it slides in and out. But uh, we don't want to do that right now. So I'll be right back. Okay, this, uh, this is Uncle Mike's sidekick. I've had this holster. I bought, I bought, originally I bought this gun about 26 years ago for my wife. Uh, she could put it in a purse, she could leave it in, in the nightstand, whatever. I bought this at the same time. It's been in it all this time. I carry this in my pocket a lot, and it, it's real good. It just slides right in and out. I could have actually, yeah, had I thought about it, when I laid that out, I could have used that holster and made the pattern the exact same and just put the little lip on it right there. But I'm used to doing them with paper so it doesn't bother me. But um, yeah, basically, that's it. That's what it is. Just something to hold it up, let the gun slide right in and out. Works good. And I'll put a, I'll put a thumb brake on there I, I, and I'll bring it back and I'll show it to you when, you when I get the thumb brake on there to show you what I'm talking about. It's not a necessity. Uh, it's easier for me, my personal gun, um, and the reason being, I'll go ahead and show you. That, that finger got blown completely off, this has got blown halfway off, so this finger doesn't bend. So when I grab a gun, most times, even this gun, is so short that I can't pull the trigger with that finger, it just doesn't bend, so I have to use this one. So I gotta have enough room to get in here and by the time you get all your hand up here and all this it just doesn't work right so if I got that thumb grip I can push it down I'll bring you back when I get it and I'll show you how to do it okay uh, what I did a little thin kydex all I did was heat it with a heat gun roll it right up around a pencil just like that just rolled it made me a little loop on top that's all I wanted this is the one I put on the holster. Same thing, put a little loop in it. What that allows me to do is when I got this, it gives me somewhere right there to push with my thumb. That's all it is. Got a loop on it because it'll be in toward my leg. That's all it does. And that's about, about the end of this. Uh, I think the next one I'll be doing, I carry this. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's a 45. Uh, 1911 45s on a shoulder holster. Uh, I carry it a lot of times. Uh, but like I say, I'm pretty well insulated. I'm a little over 300 pounds, so I very seldom ever wear a coat. And that's the only problem with the concealed uh, shoulder harness. And don't wear a belt because I wear overalls all the time, so that kind of leaves out a lot of the concealed holsters and everything. Uh, I've seen a lot of different things on these pocket holsters. I said I've been carrying this 25 for a long time in my pocket. But uh, if, if you're...
just about anywhere I go, I, it seems like I've got my hands in my pocket. I guess nothing better to do with it, just keep them in my pocket. So I've always got my hand on my gun. It's right there. It's ready. If I got a shoulder holster, I got to reach at it. I mean, if somebody's trunk coming up, going to rob you, shoot you, you start reaching, they know you're going for a gun. If you got your hand in your pocket and they say, raise your arms, when I raise my arm, I, I, I come out, I raise it with a pistol in my hand. So I'm always ready to start shooting. Uh, the way the world's got today, you got to be ready. And that's just one of the ways. But like I say, uh, I'm going to put up a few more uh, videos. So just kind of watch for them. And maybe you learn something from them. Maybe not. Uh, I do all different kind of leather work. Um, I do it mostly. I have a Facebook page you can look at. It's uh, Crystal Bear Leather Works uh, on Facebook. I post most of my pictures on Facebook. Um, let me just kind of show you. I have a few of the uh, a few things here, different stuff. Uh, and these are mostly just what I do to show people to come in. I do a lot of tooling. That's different tooling things. Belts, gun belts. Uh, just kind of get bored sometimes do it. I, I do a lot of bushcraft stuff. Uh, different thing there's one thing I, I'm a old marine and just get kind of bored and start kind of doing some stuff but uh, like I say just kind of look out for videos and maybe I can show you how to do something appreciate you watching I'm not gonna bore you with all this sewing <laughs>